testing one, two. Ik weet niet of je mij kan horen, niet Liesel. Ik weet niet of mij ook een camera aanzet dat ik mijzelf kan via wijs. Liesel Ivers, um, ik kan jou zien als een geluk. Ivers moet jij jouw microfoon activeren. Um, je hoeft niet jouw uh, video te activeren als je niet niet. Ik kan niet mijn gezicht via wijs. Mm. Hallo Liesel, ik zie jou nou. Ah, zij dan zie ik jou ook. Ik heb jou al gezien. Ja, ja. ja. Hallo. Ah, zij. I cannot hear you. Oh, no, no, no. Um, I just said hi. Man. That's I, it. And your name? Nice and loudly so you can hear you. Oh, okay. Do you have a, a PC or a laptop in front of you? Is it I a have laptop? a laptop. Okay. Yes. Well, you'll probably find that the mic, the microphone is situated near the screen. So whenever you're going to speak, you're just going to lean forward and just speak into the microphone. It's going to make it easier for me to hear. Oh, okay. All right. Wonderful. We are also waiting for a couple of other students to pop in. I don't know where they are at the moment. They should have been here. Um, have you start, started with any work this year? Yes, we started. I started with some summaries for physics. Physics. Uh, is it called momentum and impulse? Yes, yes. Momentum and impulse. What we're going to do today, we're going to start off there as well. Um, I'll explain everything. There's just some other students also logging in. Um, I think we're going to be around about four students, which gives oh. you a nice opportunity to speak to me. Yeah. Hi, Jesse. Welcome to the class. Hello. You don't have to activate your uh, your uh, video mm. if you've seen me, or I can't remember um. if I've seen you. So maybe if I haven't, if you haven't showed your face yet, then, uh, then you must yes. try and activate a, a video. If not, then if you don't have one, it's fine. Hi, Diana. Okay. Look, it's just we we're just gonna show the a video, just show faces at the start, just to say hi. That's it. So basically, I can actually get a little picture of what you look like. So if you don't have it, yeah, we weren't here. Sorry, I can't hear you. Yes. Um, my well. camera doesn't work. Okay, it doesn't matter. You can see that out of the future. Your microphone does work. Yeah. Okay, Diana, how many students are there? I don't know how to do the face cam. he's done this. Oh, just in three minutes. We have oh, soft and warm. Uh, it's needed now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But, but you are not Diana, are you? No, I'm not. Unfortunately. Just say that Jesse doesn't have a camera. Um, I think Jesse doesn't have a camera. It's fine. What Jesse okay. can do is just maybe uh, get up and just show a face or his face at your beat. Is that JC? Say hi. Hi. Hi JC. Welcome to the class. Yeah. He says welcome to the and class. Who's Reed? 
plant over here. I'd like to know who Reese is. Hi. Oh, go. Hi, Reese. Welcome to the call. Thank you. You're allowed to take your your, your uh, mask off. You can, um, but I'm not sure what the situation you are in at the moment. And then, uh, welcome to the class. Uh, I just want to remind you, everyone, that we need to be logged in at five minutes before the class starts at 25 past 11. That is just to sort out everyone's sound, just to say hi, just to show you the face. So if you've got a new hair color, then you can show it off, uh, Jesse. Um, if we, Lovely. I think we're going to listen to that one. Show, do that. Also, only one person. You can get as well. You can try it on your phone. Okay. Yeah, Jesse has the earphones mine only five as well. I'll put your phones if you want. I'll set them for Okay. Thank you. So as long as we've got one person, we'll know from next week how to reorganize this day. Yeah. Okay, at the moment. Yes. Because the literature is very important. I cannot talk when someone else is talking with me. Okay, so we one person talks at a time. The other thing that you need to be able to do, you need to be able to raise your hand. So somewhere in that option is an option to raise your hand. You need to find that. That's a way of saying I've done the sum or I'm finished or I've got a problem. Or you can just speak up. Okay, cool. We're gonna start. So now we can I'm gonna just remove the video. You can also just dump your video. We don't need to see the faces. And then whenever you have a question, you're gonna ask something. Also, what I want you to do during this lesson. I want you to send me a little WhatsApp with, doesn't matter what it's on. Hi, he's here. I just want to say hi, so that we can actually open that line of communication. You're going to use WhatsApp to send me examples of stuff. All right. Okay. I don't have your numbers here, but we're going to sort that out. So right. At the moment, what I want you to do. I want you to be to raise your hand if you can see a pink line being drawn over the screen. Or you speak up and say, yes, I can see it. Uh, I can see. I can yeah. see it. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, wonderful. Right, so that means we our screens are interactive. You can't write on my screen, but you can send me a picture of this of an example that you're struggling with on WhatsApp. Okay. Okay. Cool. We're gonna start the first chapter. It's all about momentum and impulse. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. Now, you must listen up. An object, like a ball or any physical object that has mass, can have yeah. momentum. Momentum is basically a physical property. It's called P. So that is directly proportional to the mass, also directly proportional to the velocity of the object. So the bigger the mass of an object, the more momentum it will have, or the higher velocity it has, the bigger momentum it will have. So I don't know if you've watched rugby. I don't really watch rugby, but I know if you can have a big player, someone that weighs like 140 kgs, and you can get him to run the 100 meters in 10 seconds, then he makes a good rugby player just because it takes a lot of force to stop him. So yeah. if he can run at uh, what's that, 10 meters per second, you're going to take a lot of energy to stop him. So he has a lot of momentum. With that. Okay, let's start with the formulas. We're going to use all of these formulas the whole time. And I'm going to give a couple of examples for you, not a lot. And then we're just going to look at some Newton stuff if we have time. Because the, uh, I have the idea that you're struggling with some Newton concept. We have to get that right. Yeah. There's your first formula. It says momentum equals the mass of the object times its velocity. So mass is in kilograms. Yeah. And velocity in meters per second. So your unit for momentum, very important, is most of the weights I'm going to give you is in, uh, grams. You need to first be able to convert grams into kilograms before you can use the sum. So, so it's kilograms, meters per second. 
And then this equation is just the the, on your mic, sorry, just on your mic, there's someone talking the whole time. Yeah, I cannot give, give class if someone can talk with me. The Cedric, time. they can hear you and Catherine. Sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry, I think it's Reese. On my microphone, it says Reese is talking the whole time. <laughs> I can hear you two talking. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that, Reese. I wasn't aware it's, that it's you that's um, interrupting the whole time. Okay, listen. Up. This delta P, delta P is change in momentum. Now, very important. The change in momentum is just the mass of the object times its final velocity minus the mass of the object minus its initial velocity. So that's just the momentum change. Uh, objects gonna have okay uh, what is very important is that um, you use that delta to indicate delta is that's just that triangle to ind indicate that you are going to doing the change of uh, momentum of an object and the same word being that's used for change in momentum is impulse so change in momentum and impulse is the same so don't get confused sometimes you your textbooks talks about changing momentum all the time and then in the test you get impulse and then you don't know what it is so just another note the changing momentum is the same or synonym for impulse so if you take a cricket ball and you throw it hold it and there's someone that's hitting it with a bat that change of direction or changing momentum that the ball occurs is called the impulse on the ball. Right, final equation. F is force. Delta T is delta P. So basically, we can calculate the force that that cricket bat exerts on the ball if we know the weight of the ball, if we know the velocity of the ball, and we, importantly, if we know the time the ball is in contact with the bat. I don't know who of you watches cricket sometimes. No one. I don't. Okay. I don't know if you've heard the word timing. It's also in tennis. Someone that hits a ball very hard back, they say that person has good timing. Timing just means that your contact time with the ball is very short or very low. So in other words, if you want to hit a ball really hard, someone is hitting a ball towards you and you've got a racket in your hand and you want to hit it really hard back, then obviously one, you have to exert a, a, a large force on the ball. And secondly, you must ensure that the contact time of the ball and the racket is very low. So the contact, the time that the ball is in contact with the racket must be very low. The lower the time, the quicker the ball is going to travel. It's called timing. Okay, but we'll get here in examples. So may, maybe what I expect of you quickly is just to dot these down. Just these three equations. I'll get to the NS just now. When we use force and change of momentum, we use an, uh, Newton seconds as a unit instead of kilogram meter per second, but it's the same thing. So just write this equation down, this one and this one. Just those okay. just dot them down. And then you can write P is momentum. M is obviously mass. And that's in kg. And velocity, you know, is uh, let me just get that word. Velocity is gonna be Momentum obviously is kilogram. Okay, just start it down. You're going to use it. I have pasted these equations on the examples too, but it's going to be nice if you've got it next to you. So now at the moment, what you've got next to you, written these equations, maybe in the book that you're working. I don't, I don't want you to just work on loose papers if you're not going to file it. The best thing is to have a, have a hardcover book with your calculator, a pencil, or a pen ready. Let's go. First example. Right. Let's work. There's, um, there's a ball with a mass of 200 grams and it's moving east. 
So this direction is east. It's moving east at 12 meters per second. Bang, it hits a wall and it bounced back. Now the velocity at which the ball bounces back is nine meters per second. Okay, the, the, the one thing that you can really tell me is that the velocity at which the ball hits the wall is higher than what it leaves the wall. In other words, some sort of energy got lost while the ball was in contact with the wall. And that energy is either converted into heat or sound. Now, if you've hit a ball against the wall, you'll know that that little bit of energy that it loses, it loses in the first place. You've heard the ball hit the wall. You can hear it. Anyway, All right now, first question. Calculate the momentum of the ball before it hits the wall. Straightforward question. In science, we want you to write the equation. If you don't write the equation, you're not getting marks. Mass. Momentum is mass times velocity. Cool. Mass must be in kilograms. So I'm going to take the 200 divided by 1,000. I don't need to explain this, do I? Convert uh, grams to kilograms. And important, because you're going to do a lot of sums, you're going to, take a, you're going to have a three-hour paper in front of you. Because you're doing a lot of sums, do not do these sums in your head. Do not do 200 divided by 1,000. I know everyone can do it. But after a while, you get tired. And your brain gets tired and you make a super mistake. Just write it like I'm doing now. I'm allowing the calculator to do your cal calculations for me. Okay. And then I put in the value of 12 meters per second. Okay. Now, what I've not done, which is a, a small mistake, which can bug me, I haven't decided which direction is positive. Remember, velocity is a vector. When we work with forces and velocity, we need to choose which direction will be positive and which direction will be negative. So I'm going to take the initial direction of east as positive. So I'm making a small drawing, just a reminder for myself that I'm always working in this calculation or sum, I'm working east as positive. Cool. You'll see now why it can be a real problem. So then you just put that in your calculator. Everyone does that. And give me an answer. Two decimals. That's 2.4 kilograms uh, points m dot s. Yeah. Okay. Now I've only, uh, at the moment, I only have two out of the three marks. Okay. Why? Uh, because you didn't write down the, the formula, I'd say. No, oh, the direction. One mark for putting in the formula. So if you don't have the formula, you're not putting in the values, you don't get that mark. One mark for the value with the unit, one mark for the direction. If you, if, if you wrote this, if you wrote this, 2,4, then you get zero. If you yeah. write 2,4 kilograms meter per second, you might get one mark. That's two thirds of the marks gone already. So you must write the equation, must fill in the equation. You must get the answer with the unit and the direction if it's a vector. Not everything is vectors. We're going to, we're going to be working with, uh, with energy sums, which doesn't have vectors. It aren't vectors, they, they don't get direction. But at the moment, we're working vectors, so you need to get the direction. Right, next one. Calculate the impulse or change of momentum experienced by the ball. So what is the change of momentum of the ball? Formula, please. P equals MVF minus MVI. Yeah, you can use any one of those two. Delta P means change in delta, that triangle means change. Change in momentum is if the mass stays the same, I can just use that factorized formula. If the mass changes, I need to use the top one. So the top one I'm going to use if the mass changes. Uh, the bottom one is just easy, for, so the mass is constant. So I just use this factorize, and then final velocity minus initial velocity. It's always final minus initial. Right? What's the mass? Two hundred divided by a thousand, or you could just write o comma two if you've not done it in the calculator. What is the final velocity? And kudos if you get it right. What nine? Nine is wrong. Why is nine wrong? Nine is almost right. Let's say nine is almost. No. Right. 
Well, it would be nine meters per second west, which would be a negative. It will be negative nine. Remember, we've chosen east as positive. So any velocity in a uh, western direction will be negative. So it's okay. nine minus the initial, which is positive 12. Pump that into a calculator. Go. Negative 4,2. Is that what I'm getting? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I want you to write that value because you might use it in the rest of the sum. If there's a third question, you might be using the negative 2,4, but that is converted to 2,4 kilogram meters per second. It's negative, so it's west. I don't know if you can see that down there. I can see it. Okay, what you can do, uh, if you're not a fast writer, if you can't take down notes very fast, then you just do a screenshot. Bang. And then you can make your notes later. So if you feel that I'm working too fast for you, then you just say, stop, sir. I just want to make a, a, a screenshot. Then you take the screenshot and you can do the stuff later. Okay. Or okay. you can stop me and say, whoa, you are way ahead of us. Just stop, please. Or you don't want to write something down. Or I want to make a special note like uh, NB direction. Because in these sums, if you don't get the direction right, you're not going to know it. Look, I'm going to quickly make a mistake here. Delta P is M V final minus V initial. Let me just get that right. Minus V initial. If you've done the following, if you've done O comma 2, and you've said that the final velocity is 9 minus 12, no. you would have got another answer, which is totally wrong, but you would not yeah. have. Is negative o comma six that is wrong but you would not have known it because there's nothing that tells you what the momentum change would be you would have written here o comma six kilograms meters per second but you would not have known if that's a correct answer so what's important is these sums if you don't get the direction right then you are going to lose a lot of marks without knowing it okay important so that's a very important note that you have to make. Cool. And continue with the next example. Yep. Yes. Diesel. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. What you can do, you can change uh, your name on this, on, just for this. Um, so if you're working on Diesel's computer, then you can just go and change your name to whatever it is. And then I'll remember because I'm not going to remember your name. And okay. then you can just change it back. This is a way of, I've allowed you to change your name. So in some of my classes, I have like Alton, John. I've got people with funny names, but I know who they are now. But oh, okay. at the moment, I don't really know who you are. I can't remember. It's not, a, it's not important now. We can do it next time. Okay, very important. Now you must be awake. Very important. Oh, we've skipped something. I just want to introduce, let's just go back to the previous example. I just want to introduce the other formula to you. Just want to introduce it. So I'm going to make a third question. Let's just go back there, make a third, just a third question. I want to know what is the force that the wall exerts on the ball? you will quickly realize that my spelling is not very good. And it's even worse in Afrikaans. So I'm not making excuses for can't spell in English. I can't spell in Afrikaans either. That's um, okay. Wouldn't you just add the values of your 12 and your 9? What? How, how would that make sense? How can we answer a force question by just adding velocities without, and then ignoring the mass? Okay. Very important. Very important. A very important for all your physics work. And this is the following. You are not solving this issue. You are not solving this question. You are not. The formula is solving it. So there is just no way that we could know what the force is or guess. You have a force formula. It says the force 
times delta T equals delta P. Okay, in other words, for us to answer this, I must also tell you that the ball is in contact for O comma four seconds. So in other words, the contact time, that uh, tennis ball, for instance, is in contact with the wall for, for O comma four seconds. That's actually a lot. So you have to have yeah. that contact time. And that delta T is the contact time. Let's do it this way. That delta T is the contact time. Right. So now let's just fill in the values. The force times O comma four is, do we have the change in momentum already? Yes. It is negative four comma two. That's why it's important to write this down so that you can just convert it into the next question if they're asking that. Right, now you're just gonna do that with your calculator. Minus 4.2 divided by 0, 0,4. So the force is negative 10,5 Newton. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, a negative answer means what direction in this sum? West. West. The force is 10,5 Newton's uh, waste. Right, okay, now you can add this to your screenshot. I, I, I wanted to do this just to show you the other formula and to compare it with the next example, because the next example is going to be slightly uh, harder. Right, have you done any of these sums for homework so far in your book? Yeah. Okay, what you can do, we're going to do in another example, what you can do if there's anything you're struggling with, then you can um, take a photo of it so long and then just send it to me. And then at the end of the lesson, we might just have a look at it. Might have time to look at it. We try and have time to look at it. Okay, next one. Right. Let's just look at this example. There's a hard ball with a mass of 200 grams. And that's falling down from a certain height. It hits a cement floor at 8,5 meters per second. It's in contact with the floor the time in contact is 0, 0,15 seconds, and then it bounces back by leaving the floor at seven meters per second. Right. Now, before we start, let's choose a direction as positive. What would be the, so the initial one? Yeah, okay. When we work with any vertical movement, up or down, I want you as I want you to choose the downward position or the downward movement as positive always if you can. Now sometimes they're forcing you to use the upward movement as positive, but that's you're gonna they're gonna show you that. You, the downward movement I want you to um, choose as positive for a simple reason. G value is the Oh, you're looking for this one. I'm just gonna watch. Um, so uh, I've just uh, muted your mic, Reese. If you want to say something, you just unmute and then you can talk again. Just put up your hand if that's cool with you. The blue hand. Who of you have now found that little blue hand you can put up on the screen somewhere? You must look for it, try and find it after the lesson. Okay, so I've, I'm going to choose downward movement as positive always. Why? Because then your G value is automatically positive and G is 9,8 meters per second square. If you choose upwards as positive, you are going to forget that you have to then use a negative G value and then your sum is going to stuff up. Okay, very important. We're going to do a whole chapter of vertical movement. And um, this is just to help you so that you do exactly the same in that chapter. Okay, let's go through the sum. I've got a ball. It's a hard ball. It's like a cricket ball or something. Uh, and I'm dropping it from a certain height. It, uh, it's 200 grams. It hits the floor, a hard floor, at 8,5 meters per second, bounces back upwards at 7 meters per second. The contact time is 0,15 seconds. 
Calculate the impulse on the ball. Right. Formula for impulse is delta P. And that is mass doesn't change. So I can factorize the mass out. It's the final velocity minus the initial velocity. Right. Anyone help me with values. Mass of the ball. 0.2. 0, 0,2. Final velocity. I've got, a, I've got a question about this. Yes. Gotcha. So your, you need your final velocity, which will be your 7. But now is that value negative or positive because it's going back up? Okay. We've chosen downwards as positive. So upwards would be negative. Okay, so in that, in that calculation, it would be minus 7. It would be minus 7. Very important. Okay, and then minus your initial velocity of 8,5. And then answer. That's uh, negative 3.1. I want everyone to type that into the calculator. And then I want uh, someone to explain to me why uh, how to finish the sum. Should I do that or? No, someone else. Okay. Do you see? Are you with me? Okay, cool. Thank you, Reese. Okay, I'm just going to continue. The answer is 3,1. What? You can use Newton seconds or you can use kilogram meters per second. What I just want you to do, if you have the facilitator's guide, just make sure that you choose the, the, the unit that they're using. That's always very good because I want to, my, my experience with impact is the following. You might get someone that mar that's marking your papers that is not a, a science teacher, but maybe a math teacher or someone. And then they you see a kilograms, meters per second, which is correct, but they're not going to see it on the memo. So they're going to take a mark off. And for you to get that mark back is going to be a huge struggle. So look at what the memos are doing and then use exactly the same values. Cool. Right. right now, I want you to be super sharp. Calculate the force that the floor exerts on the ball. Now, the formula looks like this. F delta T is delta P, but very important. It's going to go back to the previous example, make a drawing of that. If the ball is moving east or west, then my gravitational force, Fg, is perpendicular to the movement of the ball. So it's not applicable. But if the ball is moving up or down, so there's the ball, it's going down or up. This force of gravity is parallel or in line with the movement of the ball. So basically what that means is my F value here is actually then F nu. Very important. So if you have vertical movement, there's two forces that are working on the ball. There is the gravitational force pulling the ball down, and then there's the force exerted by the floor. So this one is going to be positive because we have chosen positive as downward, and this force is going to be negative. In other words, basically what you can do is rewrite this as FR for the force resultant, or you can use F net, F N E T underscore. Say that's the net force. So I'm going to just convert that force in the following F G minus F times delta T delta P. And this you're only going to do if the movement of the object is vertically vertical. Right. What is F G? F G is M G. Okay, remember that equation. The force of gravitation is the mass times the Gravitation acceleration or gravitation acceleration, which is 9,8. But 
for to get full marks, you have to convert that FG to MG. You can't just write M times 9,8. You must write MG first, minus F. And then I'm just going to take minus 3,1. That's the delta P value that I'm stealing from the previous sum. And that's why it's always nice to write the negative before you give the answer so you can see, okay, it was negative. If, if you skip this green step, if you skip this, you always have to wonder or rethink, was it positive, was it negative? But you write down the negative value in before you do the, before you do the final answer, you can just go and steal it. And then you're gonna write delta T and the other, uh, because I've divided that the way. So now I have O comma, have o comma one five. Right, now here I have mass times nine comma eight. Minus the force is whatever value that is. Negative 3.1 divided by 0.15. Everyone does that. And that is now very important. I'm going to write uh, minus 20, 6666. And I'm going to leave that on so my calculator. Because the force is going to the right hand side of the equation. And I'm just going to type that into my calculator that uh, blue part and just add the answer or add 20,666. So do that. And this is negative 18,7066. Right, so the force exerted by the floor is 18,71 newtons north or upwards. Um, just a question. Yes. In, in this, when you're using this formula, do you not take into consideration the time that it's in contact with the yeah. um, floor? Hall? Yes, we have. The time that it's in contact with the floor. Uh, oh, it's the point 0.15. Never mind. Uh, I found it. Okay, I'm going to give you 30 seconds just to take a nice screenshot or make some uh, uh, whatever notes if you want to. If you can't take nice screenshots, then you can maybe convince me to take a nice one for you and send it. Um, or what you can do, you can ask me, oh, sir, please just send us the link so we can find the video again. Because uh, what I do, I've, I, I don't have a, like a professional uh, YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel, but I don't have time to edit this. So I just basically take this video file and I drop it there on the channel. Uh, and you can just go and uh, ask me for the link. I'll just send you the link. You click on the link and it goes directly there. So in other words, if you're doing homework and you can't remember what's happening, you want to quickly just scroll through the video again. You must know exactly where we've done the vertical one and where we've done the horizontal one. Cool. Give me an indication if you're finished. I'm done. <laughs> Aris, are you still with us? Okay, can I co can I continue? Yes. Yes. Great. Just give me also an indication if there's any example that you're doing in your textbook at the moment that you actually want to WhatsApp to me so that I can get the timing right. Otherwise, I'm just going to make sure that we finish in time or on time. Right, there we go. We have a missile of 85 kgs. It's projected from the ground at 12 meters per second. The total burning time is 1,4 seconds. Use this to calculate the following. I want to know what is the change of momentum of the missile. And I'm going to help you with the formula because it may be new to you. Change of momentum is delta P, and that equals the mass of the object times its end velocity minus its initial velocity. 
and we are gonna what choose direction as positive which direction do you want to use as positive now you have it's a big decision because the object is moving upwards but the force of gravitation is downwards so if we're gonna be using any force questions you might want to choose downward direction as positive so i'm eyeballing the second question and see oh we need to also calculate the force so let's use downward movement as positive cool and you have two minutes to answer this question on your own this is slight snag in the sum but i think you are gonna get it right <laughs> So now time for you to go and find that little blue hand. It's also now time for you to go and find that blue hand and put it up if you're finished. seconds. Remember, you're not doing anything. The formula is calculating. The formula is solving the problem for you. Okay. You can't find the hand. Can someone who can find the hand just tell us where? If you go down, if you go up to that black bar at the top, it's a drop down. You'll find that they are, mm, I don't know. Uh, meeting info or something like that, or chat or some, somewhere there. I don't have, ever have to put up my hand, but I know it's there somewhere. You might just take a tour of try and find it. Okay, let's do it. The change of momentum is the mass of the object. The mass is 85 kilograms. So that's already in kgs, which is fine. The final velocity is 12 meters per second. Ah. Oh. Okay, this is a little bit tricky because the initial velocity of the rocket was zero. It was yeah. initially zero and then moves up to 12 at uh, 12 meters per second. So the final velocity is negative 12 because it's moving up. And the initial velocity is zero. And what's that? What's 12 times 85? It's minus 10,020. 10,020. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I, I would rather say it's 1,020. No. I mean, 1,020. No, it's 1,020. Sorry, that was my one mistake. Zero, two, zero, with a negative in front. Therefore, the change in momentum is 1020. And maybe your book is using Newton seconds. So I'm just going to introduce that because it's the same as kilograms, meters per second. If you doubt it, I can show you by using Newton M, F equals MA. And that is what? Upwards. So it's north. You can draw this just this little diagram here if you want to use north, east, south, and west. Very good. So you got that right. Happy about that. Then the force exerted by the thrusters on the ground and air. So the total time that the thrusters is working or exerting a force is 1,4 seconds. So your formula is F 
delta T equals delta P. Go, try and do that. I am gonna give you three minutes for that because just a tip, you're gonna use a diagram of forces first before you can do the sum. You have to do a little diagram of all the forces before you can do the calculation. Right, I'm just going to help you. There's my free body diagram of forces. I have uh, the force exerted upwards by actually the air on the thrusters. And I have a force exerted downwards by the gravitation of the earth. These are not Newton three forces. Very important. A free body di diagram of forces is not giving you Newton three forces. It's just giving you the two forces working on the object. Let me just explain this after we've done this. Right, cool. Are we ready? Yeah. Right. Can I, can, I, can you help me with this F? This F consists of negative F plus Fg times delta T, and that is delta P. Cool. Happy? Please speak to me. Who's missing in this class today? No one. Okay, cool. Right, FG is MG. You have to write plus MG. And I'm just going to put the delta T over to the other side. So I have delta P, which is negative 1020 over the time. Um, what's the time? It's 1, 4 seconds. Okay. Does anyone calculate that quickly for me? Uh, it's negative 728,57. Good. Right. And then I can use these values, actually. I can put in MG. MG is the mass to the times the gravitational force. I can't remember the mass. 85 kgs. 85 times 9,8. You can talk with me. <laughs> Okay, cool. 
Finish that calculation for me. The force. Quickly. I get one, five, six, one, comma, five, seven. So therefore the force is one, five, six, one, comma, five, seven upwards. No, downwards, south. You can use downwards if you want to. If you want to use south, just make a small drawing there of north, east, south, west. Then use geographic co coordinates for your answer. Right. Um, question. Maybe you want to quickly just take a shot, a screenshot of this. I know it's a bit small now, but what I can do, I can just move this calculation for, for you to that side. So I can make the screen. Oh, well, no, I can't really make the screen bigger. You can screenshot that if you want to. You can also go back in the, onto the video if you want to. Um, who's chatting? All right. Cool. Now, question. Have you done any of these graphs with momentum and impulse? Just unmute yourself and talk to me. Hello? No, I don't think so. I don't think I have done this. I haven't gotten there yet. I haven't gotten there yet. Okay, do you have any examples that you're doing at the moment? Okay, so my suggestion is that we don't do these today. Um, we start with the graphs next week because there's a lot of these graphs. I just want to introduce this. So any questions you have at the moment? No. No. Do you have any examples in your textbook that you would like to quickly WhatsApp to me so we can discuss? Um, I don't have my textbook with me right now, but Aiden has his, so I'm not sure if he has anything. Okay, otherwise what we're gonna do, we're just gonna cut the lesson here and then do the graphs next week. And that will finish off this chapter. So my expecting, I'm expecting you to do the following for homework. I'm expecting you to do all the examples in your textbook that doesn't include graphs. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, basically what we will tr be trying to do, I'll be trying to get you to work slightly ahead. In other words, once we are running more smoothly, 
you will be doing examples actually that we haven't discussed yet so that you can actually throw things. But that will happen naturally because you will have to work faster than we, what we are working. But at the moment, all I want you to do is um, do all the examples in your textbook that doesn't include graphs. Or if you feel comfortable with the graphs, then continue with the graphs. Next week, we'll be doing the graphs and then you might have examples that you want to do with me. Okay. Um, Important. Are you happy? Yes, thank you. Yes. I need to find a way just to send this video link to you. Or let's leave it there. I'm just going to put the video on later. If you want to see it, then you can text me. Because some other way, we are going to sort out the, the communication in that way as well. Okay. All right. That's it. If anyone wants to chat with me, I'm here for another 10 minutes. If you feel you have to log off, I'll see you next time, next week, same time. Okay, thank you. Wiesel, jy wil daak net gaan aanblij, ek weet nie. En Diana, maybe you also want to just stay on. Thank you. Okay, so no, no questions. Are you happy? Um, there was something I wanted to show you in the book, but it's fine. I think I can just send it to you somehow. No, no, or maybe no, no. give send it, it to Cedric. Send it now. Uh, okay, but I don't know how to show it to you. That's the thing. Okay. Right, you need to WhatsApp it to me. Okay. I'll... So you take a picture quickly and you WhatsApp it to me. Or I think um, I think that Anna's got my phone number, so maybe she yeah. can give, uh, maybe take a picture and then send it on. Okay, that sounds good. Um, I don't know where Diana is at the moment, so I'm just going to send this picture to her and then she can send it yeah. to you. Okay, cool, no problem. Cheers. Cheers.